you know, so the, the idea is that if English is more of a Creole than Haitian Creole, then why reserve the term Creole to only Creole languages, right? Um, that's, that's, a, that's a very valid question. And, and, and nowadays in Haiti, and also in Mauritius, uh, I don't know whether you, you're aware of this debate in Mauritius, people ask, you know, why, why do we call you know, Mauritian Creole a Creole? Why don't we just call it Mauritian? Why don't we just call Haitian Creole ha ha Haitian? Um, and so as a linguist, my take when I'm being asked that question is that, well, the people who speak the language, most of them call it Creole. So why am I, as a linguist, to say, no, you're wrong, call it Haitian? You see, it, you know, because we have a basic principle in linguistics, at least in, you know, when you consider uh, the science of linguistics, it's supposed to be descriptive. You're not supposed to prescribe, to tell people, no, this is what you say. You're supposed to report what we say. Um, and I have, a, I have a little anecdote when it comes to the, because people feel that the term is negative, that the term Creole, because it's been used to refer to lesser languages, it's, it's best to get rid of it. And now, as, as, as someone brought up, I don't know who asked, who asked that question. So as someone brought up, since we know, at least we, we can claim that um, we have evidence that English, in terms of its structures, in terms of its history, might be more of a Creole than Haitian Creole. So why, you know, the term Creole then doesn't make sense if you think of Creole as a structural term. But the point is that, uh, so the word Creole means different things to different people, right? Uh, so in Haiti, if someone called the language Creole, they don't think of Bikaton. They don't care about Bikaton. They don't even know who Bikaton is, mm -hmm. right? They don't know who McWhorter is. They don't know who, you know, mm -hmm. Lucien Adin or these other um, linguists who've said all these ugly things about, it, about Creole languages. Like, they don't care. It's, uh, that's what they call the languages, and, and they're happy with the term. So for them, the term has changed meaning. The term means just, this is my language. The same way with words like, let's take the, the word neg. Okay, so this is a word that actually, you know, uh, in Haiti, we have this word neg. Now, where does it come from? It comes from the French, okay, neg. Now, the French neg, you can, you can probably, you know, so this is Haitian Creole, this is French. Now, you can tell that, well, this is connected to Negro. Right? Now, in the movie that we talked about many times, I'm not your Negro, you can see that the term Negro can be seen as having some negative connotation. It's, it's not positive, right? Um, but guess what? In Haiti, the term Neg is positive. You see, uh, like I can call you Moshe with a Neg Pam. You know, you might, well, I wouldn't say it. In, well, <laughs> <laughs> you might, well, exactly, it means you might Negro, right? But it doesn't mean there is something negative about calling someone. Like, if you, live in, if you were to live in Haiti yourself, you know, you're a white person, after a couple of years, my people might call you Neg. You see, you become Neg. And, and, and here, the term Neg just means person. You know, human, you're human. You see, so in Haiti, the term neg, although it, de it derives from neg, which can be perceived as being negative, it's become just a, a noun that refers to human being. In fact, we saw that, in fact, we'll, we'll go back to that. The Salin himself said that, you know, in Haiti now, after independence, we're all neg, we're all Negroes. Even if you, if you have white skin, you know, that was 1805, right? The Salin told, all Haitians, that legally, everyone in Haiti, we're independent, we've established our freedom, our sovereignty, everyone is black. Whether you're white, whether you're Polish, whether, since you live in Haiti, you're black. And that was actually quite forward, right? It was postmodern. You understood that race was not uh, biological, that race was a political concept. You see, so from the same perspective, one could say, well, Creole in Haiti means language. It's my language. So, you know, and then there's, there are groups like on, uh, on Facebook, there's a group called Creolophonie. You know, Creolophonie, they claim that, you know, we can look at um, all Creolophonie. Creolophonie, right? So the root here is Creole, and then they use, it's, it's, it's like Francophonie, you know, this French linguistic cultural empire. They say, well, let's do our own. And, and, and talk about Creolophony because we believe that we from Mauritius, from Seychelles, from Réunion, from Martinique, from Guadeloupe, from Guyane, we all speak that language that we call Creole and we share historical concerns, interests in common. So let's call, let's create this Creolophony that will make us stronger. 
Actually, interestingly, if you go to the web Facebook page, do that, because they have interesting recordings of different, um, like God, people from Guadeloupe, people from Martinique, Guyane, Mauritius, speaking the Creole. They even had um, Christine Taubira, which is this famous um, French uh, politician you know, from Guyane, you know, black woman, very strong, very eloquent. Mm -hmm. they, had a, they, had, they recorded her speaking a Guyanese Creole, a, you know, Guyane. You see, and then you can understand them. You know, I can, you know, when I went to Mauritius, I could speak Creole in Mauritius. You see, and, and people could understand me. I could understand Mauritians speaking Creole. So there is some evidence to Creolophony, you know, that there is certain, a certain level of mutual understanding. Would that tie into decolonized which countries? Because when it's yeah. uh, sub, or whatever, we talk about like the substrate. Super the, the superstrate, yeah. yeah. Would that like, be a part of why you have this? Uh, 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 definitely, you're right, you're right, you know. Uh, that, that is thanks to the, the French that we have this, <laughs> this political solidarity, right? But, you know, it's, it's, it's history. You know, you can either use it for you or use it against you, right? In this case, you're saying, well, we have this mutual common interest based on our similar languages, and let's call it creolophony, and let's turn it into a political, political power. You know, it's, it's very idealistic, but, but, you know, why not? <laughs> So what, what about, ling like, not prescribing it to, like, people, but what about um, within linguists, like, using the term Creole, like, to classify, like, languages that originated through like, mm -hmm. the Creolization process, like, is, there's not, like, should that stay, stay the same, or? Well, no, because now, in, in science, you can redefine your terms, right? Yeah. So, so this is different. So when you're doing science, you know, it's like when, you know, so H2O, water for a chemist is not water for for a gardener, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so a gardener will use water to, 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 to sprinkle flowers without thinking about this, the structure of water. Right. But if you're a chemist, the word water has a different meaning for you. And you might want to define what you mean by water in that case. So it's, it's, just, I think, it's just in linguistics, I think, that you can, you can say, well, I'm going to use Creole with that particular sense. And for me, it's just, uh, you know, I'm going to point to these languages. You know, the, the people call them Creole who speak them, and I'm going to use the name that they use, but I'm not going to assume that it means something similar for all Creole languages, you see.